Beyonce happened. That narrative is kind of a myth. Everyone has bold Carrie Hilson's entire career decline down to shading Beyonce. I'm not going to say it didn't affect her in some ways, but it is simply not the whole truth, and it's a narrative that needs to be uncovered. Carrie Hilson is actually a fairly talented woman on her own merits. After securing a record deal at 14 with a failed girl group, she got her real star in the business relatively young as a songwriter and background vocalist. She co-wrote hits such as Omarion's Icebox, The Pussycat Dolls' Wait a Minute, and Britney Spears' Give Me More. In addition, she also wrote and provided backgrounds on Britney's Break the Ice, an album cut from Blackout. Eventually in 2006, Carrie was signed to fame producer Timbaland's label. From there on, she began making herself known as an artist by acquiring jobs singing hooks on some of Timbaland's tracks. One of those titled The Way I Are was a fair hit, becoming Carrie's very first top 5 track in the States. Carrie made herself visible appearing in the hottest R&B pop act videos, such as Neo and Usher. One of Usher's biggest hits, Love in This Club, was killing the charts around this time. And Carrie would help pin the remix to this song called Love in This Club Part 2 made to boost the song even more. Rumors swirled that Carrie was initially supposed to be on the remix. However, Usher decided to go with Beyonce, who was the bigger star and at the height of her career. Eventually, Hilson's debut arrived in 2009, simply titled In a Perfect World. It pushed Carrie into new territory, now competing with some of the R&B pop stars that she wrote for. She was now one of those women occupying the same field, alongside Beyonce, Sierra, Rihanna, etc. On her debut album was Turning Me On, a fun R&B song featuring Lil Wayne, which became a top 15 hit in the States. A remix of this track was leaked, which had lyrics assumed to be about Beyonce and Sierra. Your vision cloudy if you think that you do best. You can dance, she can sing, but need to move it to the left. She needs to go have some babies, she needs to sit down, she fake, them other chicks ain't even worth talking about. Which got the press talking. At the time of the remix's release, Carrie said, I'm not jealous of anybody's career. I've worked with Sierra many times, I'm a fan of Beyonce's. Still, after this, Carrie went on to have some pretty big hits in her canon. Which is why the narrative that she dissed Beyonce, and suddenly her career was over, is not the full truth. The second big hit from her debut album was Knock You Down with Kanye West and Neo. It reached the top 10 in Canada, Ireland, the United Kingdom, and the USA, and was a fair collaboration between the three, talking about the effects of heartbreak and love. Her debut album and its songs received a lot of recognition from the industry, being nominated for Grammys, BET Awards, and American Music Awards, so the industry was still definitely in Miss Hilson's favor. In 2010, Carrie embarked on the journey of her second album, No Boys Allowed. Her first single breaking point stalled, not cracking the Hot 100. Coming off such a successful debut, it's clear to see this was a major flop, suggesting that her career failures had little to do with Beyonce, and more to do with Carrie herself struggling a bit to keep up with the zeitgeist. No Boys Allowed had one big hit, which was also her last hit. It stands as the best song of her career, and not a bad way to go out of the game. The song is Pretty Girl Rock, which is a song about pretty girl rockin' and female empowerment. It surged into the top 30, accompanied with a music video paying tribute to black icons such as Josephine Baker, Dorothy Dandridge, The Supremes, and Donna Summer, and TLC. The video was received well. When speaking about the expectations for her album, Carrie threw a little shade at Sierra, due to the underperformance of her album Basic Instinct, which only sold 37,000 copies first week. Carrie said, I would like to sell higher than 35K. I mean, anyone would. I saw a quote where she said, it's not all about the numbers, and I'm not really a chart reader. I don't look at charts. It's probably what she honestly feels. In the end, Carrie did open up with way more than 37K, with No Boys Allowed debuting at number 11 with 102,000 copies sold first week. But without a proper hit single to follow up Pretty Girl Rock, the album would ultimately underperform. And as of today, it still stands as her final album. In 2011 at the Soul Train Awards, Carrie refused to hold the newest issue of Juicy Magazine after noticing Beyonce and Jay-Z were on the cover, which sent the media into a frenzy and angered Beyonce fans. 
I also want to say there have been many allegations that Beyonce fans threw a CD at her, which is totally fake. It is a tweet that was made by Beyonce fans to get Carrie in some trouble, and that it did, and in turn created some pop folklore. Carrie even had to come out and deny it herself saying, fake tweet, fake story, Photoshop is a hell of a drug. When people use so much of their own time and effort to prove that they hate you, they must realize it has the opposite effect. Thanks for the laugh, now cut and paste yourself a life. Now Carrie did feel the ripple of shading Beyonce a bit, because producers, namely super producer The Dream, stated he wouldn't work with Carrie due to her shading his good friend, and for a minute, she became the laughing stock of the R&B world. And on Beyonce's single Bow Down, there are allegedly some disses towards Miss Carrie Hilson, particularly in the second verse. Rolling high, leather and wood, keep it trolled, that's what's good. Kiss my mama, show that love, pop them bottles in that club. Beyonce is just sort of saying she paved the way for artists like Carrie. I heard your boo was talking lip, I told my crew to smack that trick, smack that trick, smack that trick. Guess what they did, smack that trick. And I guess this is like an insinuation to the CD throwing fiasco, which is not true, but it was just like a funny dig. And the producers of I've Been On are actually Timbaland and Polo the Don, who signed Carrie Hilson. But in turn, Beyonce's producer friends said that they wouldn't work with Carrie Hilson. So the people who signed Carrie Hilson actually helped Beyonce make a diss towards her. Carrie eventually stepped away from the spotlight, not writing or singing on tracks, and she revealed why in 2018. When Pretty Girl Rock was at the top of the charts, I was bearing the weight of some personal and professional mistakes, and they just weighed so, so heavy on my spirit. Add to that, this is when I decided to jump out of an 11 year relationship. That is just bad timing. It all just kind of spiraled for me and became something I had never been through. I had never recognized myself as a person who can't pick themselves back up. I was literally on stage crying. Carrie asked her team for a year off, but they weren't very understanding and she eventually began to travel the world. Life wasn't about music anymore. Life wasn't about the charts or watching them, she said. Life wasn't about releasing music. Shooting videos, writing songs, being in the studio. Life was about survival for me. Seven years of my life have been a battle with depression. And I can't say that I'm all the way clear, but I'm in the clear. Carrie toured with Monica, Ashanti, and Brandy, amongst others, on the Femme It Forward tour in 2019. In 2021, Carrie revealed her and Beyonce actually personally talked and basically insinuated that her label pressured her to diss Beyonce and Sierra, which doesn't surprise me. History has shown that the biggest acts within their fields do tend to have label made trouble come after them, so the label can introduce or get a smaller act's career going. She actually has introduced herself. It was a gracious moment, Carrie said. I appreciated it. I felt like she understood what happened, what had transpired, and there was a bit of healing in that moment when we met. I take her as a very intuitive kind of soul, as I am, Carrie says of Beyonce. Carrie wrote some of the biggest hits for the biggest stars of her time, and of all time, and she has found a new career path in acting. She has landed a few movie roles since she stopped making music, such as 2012's Think Like a Man, 2016's Almost Christmas, and her most recent where she has a starring role called Lust, a seven deadly sin story. So Carrie is still out here doing well for herself.